Surf's up guys, it's Maui Snake here, and today I'm going to be going over the best 1-2 punch in Tier 1 Counter-Strike today. And as the thumbnail implies, that's Axile and Hobbit, both playing for Gambit right now. Of course, we are in the online era, I don't think anybody needs to reiterate that further, although I just did that. But, at the same time, we will be seeing shortly how they shape up on LAN. I think Hobbit has obviously proven himself on LAN at this point. Axile, I can't really say the same, but we'll see how their skills translate moving into IEM Cologne. I know that people are pretty interested in how Blast is going to turn out too, but at the same time, they've got another championship under their belt. A top tier one at that, as they just took down IEM Summer. And Axile and Hobbit in the Grand Finals, map number three to close it out. Both went hard in the darn paint on Overpass as... Sergey, or uh, what the heck, Sergey Axile Riktorov. Uh, pff, okay, yeah, someone in, someone that can actually speak Russian, correct my pronunciation on that. Put up 23 kills, only 11 deaths, and actually put up 108 ADR. Hobbit, on the other hand, 20 and 12, 92 kills, and we're going to see how they did it. And the reason I kind of wanted to show both of them is because they both had some really impressive rounds in this game. It wasn't just a one-man deal. Uh, I could have shown Axile, but there were some rounds where he doesn't do as much. So I wanted to go back and forth. And I think that's something that moving forward, I kind of want to do a little bit more because it's just a little bit more interesting to see more action, honestly. And I think that it's fun to kind of go back and forth and show and contrast, compare the styles of players on a team, kind of like how I did with the Heroic game on Ancient. So we're going to actually, I was thinking of breaking this down where Axile would get the CT side, Hobbit would get the T side, but I actually went through the demo already and actually can show you basically the best rounds of each player or basically who was the most impactful. And I'm going to go back and forth on a couple rounds, but we'll see that the T side was really led by Hobbit as he put up a 14 and 8 score line and Axile still an impressive 11 and 7. And on the CT side, Axile just farmed. Uh, he really wanted to get out of that server. 2.05 rating. 12 and 4 kill death ratio, 138 ADR. Another reason I'm, I'm kind of framing it like this is that in the past three months, even though that Axile won the IEM Summer MVP, actually in the last few months, they have the exact same rating. Uh, they've been playing the same games, obviously, but 1.23 for Hobbit, 1.23 for Axile. If you click Hobbit's page for the last three months, pretty much, pretty darn similar stats. Uh, you can see that Hobbit has a little bit higher ADR, a little bit higher impact rating, uh, dies just a tad more. Uh, honestly, you look at these stats back and forth, and there's barely any differences at all. Uh, so that's why it's. I think it's worthwhile to go over both of them. So let's get into it. All right, so here on the pistol round, this is a, one of the few rounds that OG actually won, but we're going to start it off with actually Hobbit. And I'm going to be using people's crosshairs from now on. It will be still on native res, but we're going to see how early on Hobbit and Axile silently get down connector, not giving up any information whatsoever. Notice that the first player can actually drop down uh, pretty quickly, but the second player has to use the ladder and silently go down. And they're just both making, making their way up connector right now. So it's a little bit of a pack right now as they clear the space out. And they will... Just jiggle everything out. Just look how diligent they are. Look how careful they are. And look at how close they are, too. Uh, really just willing to use the numbers. And they're not really breaking too many in, until, really, they get to the top of Connector. And this is where they do go for the split. Hobbit takes down one from Long. Makes his way back. And an interesting mid-round from Gambit as they decide after that one kill... They don't have the utility to take A, so they would rather face off towards B. They have actually a decoy, if I'm not mistaken, that went towards heaven. And then Hobbit comes out, decides to push in front of the smoke during the... Actually, he thinks about pushing in front of the smoke during the plant. Doesn't actually decide to do it, but does push out later on. Gets one more kill, but then gets shut down as OG are able to take it. Honestly, just a pretty solid pistol. Pretty slow start, and then they're able to... Uh, just that they're not able to actually win the round nothing like nothing crazy in that one it's a little bit slow for gambit to start in this game axile though is going to be the b defaulter here as they force up he has a galil not really any utility but he's just looking for any kind of play he plays anti-flash for just a split second and the 1v1 duel he'll take that all day flames gives it up 
And actually, they're playing with a 5v4 advantage now. So Gambit decide that after that pick, they want to group up. Axile leaves B at this point, kind of holds for a little bit longer, just make sure he doesn't get timing. And then he joins up with the rest of the team. And OG actually made a really strong read in this one. Uh, they had a nice start to this as LXEB got, got so much space towards this B position. And Axile still worried about the flank. Checks that one more time. And you'll kind of notice that Gambit play a bit of a slower style. I mean, they're very methodical. They're very calculated about their approach in rounds. So not really going to be seeing a ton of just super fast plays. Their pace is probably on the slower end of teams. Going for a little bit of a spam at Divider. That actually does go through, as you see the bullet holes on the other side on top of his head right there. It's a really nice way to clear that space out. You can use pretty much any rifle, even Deagle, to clear that. And then Valde with just a super good peek out there, and he's able to take down Axile. Not much more to this round. We'll switch to Hobbit briefly, but yeah, that's going to be that. Uh, this is a full eco, and they just die. I'm actually not going to go over this one. I usually try to show every round, but it's actually just, it's actually just not worth your time. So... This one is going to be a Hobbit round, actually. So we're finally going to be able to see a dub for Gambit. But all in all, I think some, some kind of interesting things about the differences in these players is that Hobbit's kind of a pack guy for this team, kind of an entry person, an entry player at that. Axile is a little bit more of a late round guy. I wouldn't say he's super baity, but he does get to be that B, that B defaulter, which is usually where you send some of your most more clutch and experienced players. Uh, like Flusha was kind of famously a B defaulter for Fnatic when he was at his peak. Uh, that I mean, just kind of you put your brainy, brainy guys there. And, and it looks like Gambit are just going for a bit of A control. Notice Hobbit is playing anti-flash at this point, so that if there's any proactive play from OG, he won't get caught. And then he gets just to be the entry fragger. He saw the back of Nico here, so he's just keyed in onto that location, takes down him, and then still actually kind of slows it down. Uh, decides to use his utility at the back of default. And that's just such a great shot from Hobbit. A great way to play against this counter smoke. This counter smoke right there was thrown by OG. It's usually a great way to stop any oncoming players because it's generally the best way to enter into the A bomb site by actually moving in as such. Just moving through that smoke and then kind of clearing out this position like that. So OG actually get bested by their own counter smoke. The fact that Hobbit mollied out the back of default there, forced out Montu, and uh, gave him a favorable fight where he's almost able to one-way this. Uh, if you actually see Montu's perspective in this round, he actually pretty much could not see Hobbit at all, and Hobbit just got the better of him there. So, actually making the opponent's utility work against themselves. And Hobbit, and, and I mean Gambit, they just are so ready to pause in these kinds of moments. That's what makes them so hard to play against. They're just, they just grind you down in these kinds of rounds where it feels like, okay, they got a couple kills. Why are they not just diving into the bomb site at this point? And they still just feel everything out. Like they really, really just make you sweat in these moments. And uh, at this point, Alexi B peeks out, gets impatient, and that that's why Gambit are just so so frustrating to play against. So nice 3k for Hobbit here. And you're going to see a, an OG round actually here, but you're going to see kind of another little play that Gambit like to use in order to try to start their rounds off. So Hobbit, first player out, will smoke the Molotov as he did in the previous round. You kind of wait, thinking that potentially there's an aggressive play from OG towards Fountain. Flash over from Hobbit to make this fight a little bit more favorable if anyone is playing behind the Fountain. And this is just a great shot for Montu that you're going to see in just a second here. But Hobbit goes for the peak here, and Montu actually is ready for that angle. So just is able to take him down, and actually they are able to convert this one. Uh, really just solid start from OG. We're going to zoom through this one. Just utility from Axile and the rest of, of Gambit as they try to get through this. But Montu actually puts up a really great fight uh, along with the secondary op uh, from Alexi B. So, pretty tough game so far for Gambit, but it's not over yet. Axile still needs to get involved in this half. We know that he has a pretty good half at that, so this is going to be a great round from him. And 
and Gambit just want to take the guesswork out of the round. That's a really cool approach, by the way. It, it's it's a very, like, basically, when you know that the opponents are on a double op, it's very common for teams to throw out just a B exec off the bat. You want to take a lot of that defaulting away where those ops can find picks across the map, and you just want to hit a play just outright and try to swarm a bomb site. So Axile and the rest of the crew just go for a straight-on B hit. We're going to see some of the, the nades come out here where there was a smoke heaven, and that's pretty much it. It was a pretty, pretty light hit at that. But Axile just goes man mode here. Great shot onto Valde. And just continues to press on forward. Just barely spots Alexi B around that smoke. And he still decides to push on forward. But does get taken down eventually. And then Shiro just kind of playing around with the bomb there. But... This was supposed to be just the two, the two players, but we're going to watch Shiro here as he's just such a great clutcher and just uses all the time, just always feels like he's the one that's in control of these situations as he walks all the way to A. And Montu, you know, like this is a not, this is not a bad spot for him to be because he can, he can generally just find any kind of, uh, like it, it's very quick for him to rotate to A and he can still cover all of B from heaven, but Shiro knows that i mean he's usually the opera for gambit knows the likely position of montu in that kind of situation and then just kind of this does this little jiggle and you just really don't expect him to be in that angle there's only so many angles you can clear if you're montu but that's why shiro is the late round guy for this team so two on the board for gambit money's actually pretty bad for og here they call a timeout I'm, I'm kind of curious why they call the timeout. Usually after the clutch, I guess you can let let it settle, you know, like let it sting a little bit uh, after you went around like that, a 1v2. But we're going to see how Axile just goes through default procedures here. Throws the Molotov towards short. That's very standard, just aiming at the bottom right of the B and then goes for a little bit of spam there in case anyone tries to push. Throws out a lot of spam, in fact. And... This is just a really cool off angle on top of the barrel. Another good thing about this angle is that a lot of teams like to flash right here. So usually there's there's a couple lineups you can do, one from right here, one from right here, and they both just kind of pop in this general area right here. And the reason Axile stands on the barrel isn't just because it's a cool off angle, but the flash actually will kind of land right in front of him. So if you look at this, it'll basically be behind his head right there. So the bridge actually will cover him from being flashed. That's why he likes to stand on this position. Also, it's kind of nice that if they kind of take a bad peek at, at the lower end, like, it, it's just kind of a, such a... Like, it's very hard for him to get headshotted, but he can really see people's feet very well. I guess you can claim that they can see his feet pretty well too, but there's, there's just some cool reasoning behind why you would choose this position. But basically the reason that it's anti, the, the main reason is that it is kind of anti-flash. So the, the default from Gambit nets them a couple of kills early on, and then Axile finally decides it's his time to go. Flames is making a lot of noise towards B. This is kind of showing some of the inexperience of Flames where he's making this just so abundantly clear that that he's there. And then Axile just pounces given that he's, he's given every sound cue in the world. And then just, Axile with perfect game sense, like perfect crosshair placement is the is really what makes Axile so special. Like we did see a couple of really snappy shots from him, and of course he has some excellent aim like that. But this guy's crosshair placement is is kind of on Nico, uh, Bosnian Nico levels at times. Like it, it's it's so so precise. Sometimes he doesn't like he legitimately from long range has so many times when he doesn't have to even move his crosshair at all. So this round he's kind of masking that. It, that Hobbit might be here because he's throwing out the same Molotov. That's why you throw the same Molotov. That's why you throw the same spam. Uh, the Flash does set up Hobbit to try to get into that water position, but Axile this time just kind of peeks on out. They know that OG are on a, a full save here. They, they're able to read the money. And so after losing a pick towards A, Axile decides that it's his time to go, that he can maybe try to find some space himself. Also, he was relayed some information that there were multiple members from OG there. And notice that he still just takes his time, doesn't just run into the bomb site. knows that he's still quite a ways away from Hobbit. And I think he heard Flames there drop down towards Pit, which is why he's kind of peeking this all out like that. But as soon as Flames gives him just a shoulder, it's just, it's over for him. So, Axile... Also, just, just, it's like, it's like he's fighting through the trenches. Like, he, he literally, he actually moves so 
deliberately and diligently as he makes his way up, like never overextending in terms of space. He, he just constantly is is just making these very very slight movements that are all are, are that, that basically can't go completely untraded. Like sometimes he's a little bit farther from his team, and this is a round where you'd probably give him that kind of leeway because it's a it's a full ego for OG, but. Uh, he's just so he's so careful about these things and really at this point just securing a, a good late round position Gonna take a lot of damage, but still far enough away that he won't die to the bomb So this is a kind of a hectic one I'm gonna actually move between Hobbit and Axile as Hobbit actually starts the round as he goes through connector Throws a smoke towards the end of it here As he moves up with Shiro notice that they're working as a pack to go through this position that Shiro is covering him, but there's a great flash to set up Hobbit as he gets that kill onto Montu, and then Axile is just, he, he's thinking about he's thinking about that, but he doesn't go for it. He's thinking about going through that smoke, but just realizes, okay, you know what, I have a 5v4, we don't need to take any risk like that. Let, let OG go for the rotation, and that's when he decides it's his time to strike. Once he knows that OG are trying to reclaim that position towards short, Axile knows he has the timing and almost gets both players. But he only actually finds the one, does almost, I mean, he almost kills Flames as well. But now Hobbit picks up an op because Shiro died towards short. And Hobbit just actually books it all the way towards long. As he has a player in inters slotted all the way up here. And Hobbit actually shows that he's not a terrible opper in this round. As he just continues to hold the line. And, and notice that they just use all the time. Like, they, they're so... They're so okay with running it down like that. And Hobbit, who hasn't made really any noise here, catches Nico off by surprise, pushing through the smoke. Throws a flash towards CT to try to cover at this point. Doesn't actually hit that one, but just expects Flames to go for that kind of thing. That's one of those things where there's only one win condition for Flames in this round. It's not to play it slow. It's to try to catch Gambit as they're planting at that point where they have to because they have 10 seconds left. And... Hobbit, Hobbit's just super ready for the fight. Not not fiddling with nades. Uh, I mean, it's what you expect from a professional. But you'd see a lot of players that are less experienced think that, oh, maybe if I throw all the nades, like, I can stop him. But it, like, the, the best answer there is to just keep your gun out. And Hobbit shows exactly why. So, Hobbit here, sitting 9 and 5, goes for the water play once again. Just runs on in. It's a full USP round, and he knows that Alexi B is going for this jump right now. Very aware of that. And as OG just push into water, just just <laughs> amazing trigger discipline. Kind of a messy spray, but still gets all three. Takes some 26 bullets to get three kills. And we'll still take that. But really, it's just a USP round at this point. Another decent shot from Hobbit. But... just he, he's, he's starting to feel it at this point. They're starting to feel... Uh, their grasp tightened around OG's neck in this game. And Hobbit just playing the pixel angle in this one. This is a little bit more of what Hobbit does on the default when he's solo. He just kind of holds this pixel angle. If you can see right here, you will notice that in this sliver right here, really, really, it's really slight, but you can see through this. This is a trick that people have been using for a, couple, a few years now as the connector defaulter. It's pretty much the, the one of the safest passive ways to hold this because another thing is that even if an op actually catches you, it's it's such a tight angle that it actually won't pretty much kill you unless it headshots you through this because the thing is that the, like it's kind of like the pixel angle on apartments of inferno like b apartments where it's it's so slim that the bullet is actually sometimes wider than this space so i mean as an opper i've shot this before and thought i killed somebody but nope it's just a, just a wall bang and also being a connector defaulter on other teams i've also been shot and just been like okay you, you don't even you, you don't actually even kill me. So just a really, really tricky spot uh, where you, you just get free info. Um, it's one of the few things that the connector player can do that's kind of a trick, I'd say. There's there's some other things on the CT side, like one ways and stuff, but on the T side, there's, there's not a lot you can work with. So just makes his way up with the timing of his team. This is a really slow round from Gambit. At this point, Hobbit kind of assumes that there's potentially a player in water, and he mollies out 
the, the crims position, is how all my teams have labeled that spot right there, and they know that they have to go 25 seconds left. They, they, this is a weird round from Gambit where it felt like they were just really expecting OG to get aggressive in this one, and Hobbit tries to go for the play into B, but at this point, OG did a really good job of holding their utility, not only, like, look at Nico, he has full util, Montu still has full flashes, like, that's not a mistake by OG by any means, and actually Gambit just decided to save. But that's kind of showing what the passive default procedures of Hobbit are in, in that round. And this is actually going to be an Axile round. Uh, as they decide to change up the pace. The last round, they got caught because they took too long. And so, you know, they just decide why not why not just play right in their faces. So good flashes from Inters to set this all up. And look at the mollies here really briefly that, um, that Gambit use in order to try to take space. It's just like a double pit molly in this moment. So I'm going to actually slow it down and I'll try to show this. And another flash behind that that pillar. So they threw... Actually, did they throw two? I think they threw one actually. No, it's over there and over here. So two very common spots. And then Nafany threw a flash that landed right around the pillar as Hobbit is jumping around the corner. Like, like every... Like when I say they're playing from in the trenches, it really feels like that. Like they, they care about every inch of space and they, they do such a great job in terms of just finding it. So that flash there sets them up. Axile now throws a flash so that... So that Nafany can kind of peek on four. He thinks that, well, he kind of peaked heaven on that one which, because he has this one way. But if anybody were to push up, would have been effective. So Axile plants the bomb, re-smokes the middle of sight so that he can actually have a lot of options here. Goes for a little bit of a jump spot, which felt like a, an unneeded risk. But, you know, it's a calculated one that you can get free info. Usually free info, unless they hit a really nasty shot on you. And at this point... I feel like the uh, Gambit already knows that OG are likely saving in this round, so they just kind of start hunting at this point. But that was just a really solid B take, and it showed just how good Gambit's procedures are. Like, one of the hardest things for a lot of teams to deal with is when there is a smoke down right here that the CTs toss as you're doing a fast B hit, so many teams get locked up in this position. And you could see that Gambit, even there, had a perfect response where basically Nafany, or I think it was Nafany, threw a flash that landed right on the other side of Pillar as Hobbit was jumping through the smoke so that he doesn't get blind, but a player that's barrels would get blind by that flash. That it, it's just it's just so well thought out. Like it's not it's not fluky wins or anything. If anybody, I don't think anybody is thinking that anymore. That Gambit is fluking their way to these victories, but you can just see how how, how much they care round by round. So round thirteen, another Hobbit round here. And it's a fast B play once again. Wait a second. Yeah. Okay. They they lost this round actually. That's why I showed it. Basically, they were trying to run the same place twice in a row. OG catches it off, uh, catches it out as Valde kind of goes two for one with his teammate there. And that's pretty much OG or Gambit are kind of like weirdly, like they're pretty locked out of this round, even though they found that that kill because the push from Nico was already coming in. Like he was already in an aggressive fountain setup and now he just has a perfect position and he's able to shut it down. So that's going to be that round. So back to... Some Gambit success as Hobbit makes his way through Khan using the same pixel angle that we talked about earlier. So we'll, we'll kind of go past this one. Throws a smoke at Connector there. And this is kind of an interesting jiggle. I, I'm not, I'm actually not totally certain why he decides to do it like that. It feels like maybe he's looking at the radar while he decides to jiggle like that. Uh, but. Just plays around as smoke as it's fading, using that kind of that kind of glitch. I don't know if it's a glitch anymore. It's it's really just a feature of the game that when you're standing in the smoke, you can when it fades, it's easier for you to look out than in. And another thing that he does is he actually positions himself when the, when it was fading. You can see that the position he's he was in was against this pillar right here, and this is actually just dark. Like if he stands in the smoke and it's against a darker surface behind him, it is very hard for CTs to see. But you would see, you would have noticed that if he stood in front of the fire extinguisher, and this may be intentional, may not be. Uh, I'm gonna kind of 
go on the side of it being slightly intentional that he decides like he doesn't want to move one while the smoke is fading and two he just wants to put himself his back against a very dark surface because it's so hard to see into that if if he does that so just checking out all the angles still careful about it but at this point he recognizes there's probably nothing there still goes for these spams here which are pretty nice in just catching anybody it's a little you would have probably wanted to be a little bit to the right there because people don't usually stand here but there's a flash for hobbit to get into the water position at this point as gambit just slowly take map control a little bit of spam wars between him and alexi b does some actually really good damage finding a timing there on him And OG kind of say, screw it, we're going to blow the door open. And now we see Hobbit throwing a nice support flash here for Naphany. So Naphany actually gets set up to run into the bomb site here. But Hobbit now just takes the bomb from, from Axile, runs into the site because it's all clear now, gets it down, and actually stays on the site for a while. And this is kind of a, like, there's some, some, some kind of, I guess, lower level teams would say, you know, just play off the site immediately, but uh, Gambit Gambit want to just keep some members on the site. It, it makes the retake as hard as possible if you're set up like close corner, default, kind of long corner. It, it, it's so much harder than if everybody just groups back. That's not really relevant for this round, but just kind of a reason to stay on for a bit. Also, can set up a crossfire with that player that was close right, and then uh, just they hunt them down. That's... That's pretty much that round. All right, round 15, last one of the half. And Hobbit, once again, using the little pixel angle right there to watch for any players in connector. And he kind of actually goes a little faster. It was kind of around one minute that he was doing this before, but this time it's around 120. And I think he just kind of has the feeling that there's no one from OG in con at this point. Like, the, he hasn't really faced any resistance at this position. They still use a double Molotov to clear it out. But you'll see that the spam from Hobbit finally works. He heard the tag on Valde, but and that's why he does it. Every single time, it, it doesn't work. But finally, OG decided to take water control. And that's a free pick for Hobbit in this round. And there's just there's just nothing that Valde can even do. Like, he, Valde's in a great position at that point, And that's one of the best positions to actually lock down water single-handedly. Because Valde's position, you can see the feet as they're running through the short pipe. And uh, along with Axile running through the pipe and a flash over the top, Hobbit decides to, to move out. He actually misses the timing there on that player in Nico, But... You'll see that the smoke there from Hobbit, that is the better smoke. Uh, you'll see that a lot of teams, there's two types of smoke people throw here. One's kind of on the bench and you throw at the woman's head at, on the, the bathroom sign. But the one that Hobbit throws is actually goes a little deeper so that they don't have that little lurk space because the other one blooms kind of more like this. And that space allows CTs to run out in this direction and actually take a pretty favorable fight. Uh, so Hobbit actually throws the slightly better one. Just little little optimizations that have come over time on Overpass. But that one has been going on for a few years. Like it's just it's just a slightly harder lineup is the problem. But you'll see that if anyone runs out of that, they're just dead. They're completely disadvantaged. But that's it for the half. As you know, Montu tries something but doesn't work. And I think if we describe Axile and Hobbit's roles here on the T side. Uh, you'll see Hobbit is a little bit more of an entry player on set set strategies. Axile's a little bit farther in the back a lot of the time. Sometimes it's spawn dependent, but Hobbit kind of gets to be that connector player or pack player, whereas Axile is almost always the solo lurker towards the B side of the map. Hobbit is frequently by himself on top of that, but he kind of connects with the team at the top of connector a lot. And both of them just very thorough in their approaches. They both have a lot of nice little counters, and they, they, they just feel like they're playing incredibly optimal cs in the in in pretty much their procedures the way that they move across the map the way that they wait for utility from teammates just all around really good stuff and we'll see uh the pistol round here where nothing really happens on the side of gambit but we'll still watch it anyways so hobbit goes goes for a little bit of a jump spot here doesn't actually see them but the flashes come out and this is sometimes what pistol rounds are, you know, you just miss your shots and you get taken out. And that's pretty much it. That's pretty much it for this round. Uh, just clean entry and Axile tries to 1v5 and he dies. So that's going to be it. But things change in round number two. 
This hobbit bunny hops over. Just, th this is, okay. The reason we're watching Hobbit here is because this guy is just so frustrating with his movement. Like, the way that a lot of players would play this out is that they would just jiggle it, but Hobbit goes a step further because he doesn't want to get spammed through the wall where he jiggles and just air strafe kind of jumps backwards a little bit. It's like kind of an air strafe. And then he throws his smoke, wanting to slow something down there, but OG actually are just have already sped up into the site. It's great support flash from Hobbit there, which will enable, I think, Naphany. Naphany yeah, wants to peek through it, but he doesn't actually get a kill, so back to Hobbit. And now he's kind of still in this position where they're trying to play somewhat aggressive around these positions, and everyone's just flooding onto the site. And really, Hobbit there, just kind of jiggling things out of the meeting. Good support flash to set up his team, but it was actually the rest of Gambit who took them down on the site. Just really... Like, when, when Gambit, I, I think Machine described it on the broadcast, like, Gambit is a Hydra on this map, that they're so, they, they, they actually rotate so quickly, and sometimes they're in gamble stack positions already, that it really feels like when you're taking up, trying to take space from them, it's just like everyone is suddenly there. Like, it, they, they seem so aware, uh, they, they seem to have so many tells on opposing teams. So, this is, this is the, uh, the Gambit shutdown now, Axile throws a Molotov towards Fountain. Holds a flash for a potential counter if Shiro needs some help, but just backs on up. And now at this point, Axile kind of playing a, a bait and switch game there with Shiro, where it's just a cool little setup where he's going to peek out towards some of these positions for Shiro briefly. And if there were anyone kind of at Divider, what, what he could have done is he could have tucked away and then Shiro could have swung out. And this is just a really kind of weird gamble play, or kind of a, kind of not a gamble play, kind of a cheeky one, where he just throws a smoke a little bit to the left, so he gives, gives himself, carves out a little space for himself there, and if any, you know, T on OG side decides to walk in late and maybe take that space, then he's just going to catch them. So he plays around map. And this is also just a really strong anti-eco spot. It kind of feels like you're exposed, but there's so many nades that can support you from this position. And Axile here kind of has a flash ready. I think this is potentially a jump throw flash, but could just be kind of him holding this position. And now Axile plays anti here and just goes for a timing swing. Right when that molly comes out, as, as maybe OG are thinking, how are they going to respond to that? He just decides to swing with the Molotov. And this is something, this is kind of a luxury you get when you have very superior weaponry where there might have been a trade there. But it's a risk that he's willing to take, even commits with it, the full crouch swing. But him and Shiro just carve everybody up as they try to make it towards the A site. And now round 19, we're going to go to another Axile round. The Molly actually misses from Shiro. So even Gambit sometimes miss their Molotovs, their nades. And with timing, actually throws a nade that barely, barely doesn't catch Alexi B. And they fall back off of the position, but they still will be a challenge here at A. And you can see that Axile, once again, knows that he has the best gun uh, across himself and his opponents. So he's very just willing to, to brawl. So, just plays a nice little setup between himself and Shiro. Almost gets caught off, but because Shiro is taking so much attention away, it, it works out for him. And now this is going to be a little bit of a tricky one where Hobbit and Axile both contribute... And so, Hobbit throws a molly for short. Notice he does the left right. Notice he does the left right click run throw so that he doesn't actually have to stop. A lot of players will have to stop on this one because they throw a left click at usually the third high one to third highest thing. But it's just it's just another thing where uh, Gambit are just more efficient than other teams. Left right click run throw a little bit higher. The lineup's tougher, but you can maintain your speed and you don't lose that say half second where you would normally stop to throw the Molotov. And then he blows up the door, so, and decides that with Naphany, they're gonna do a little bit of a boost here. Another mega efficient play here is that Naphany is not standing on top of the sandbags, he's standing on the side of the sandbags, because what this what this gives Hobbit is a very clean jump up, where he doesn't ever have to do like a re-jump or a crouch, uncrouch kind of thing. It's just a smooth process so that he can peek this very cleanly and notice that his teammate even just threw a flash uh, enters just through a flash that popped right there, so this was just going to be a super favorable fight for him either way. The only way it wouldn't be is if there's a player kind of in the perfectly deep spot and connector, so other than that, you see that Hobbit just has a really good angle here. Goes for a peek, 
doesn't want to stay up there. And that's kind of smart because a lot of teams like to linger there. They like to hold that position, but it's actually very easy for T's to pre-aim you when you're on that boost. Uh, I think that's something where like, it's kind of one of those things where it's like, oh, like, like Gambit don't take risks in that sense necessarily, or they don't hear where like it, it feels safe it feels like you're in an advantage position but it but like pros are so good now that the pre-aims are just so so easy that for them that they don't need to like they don't want to just sit in those kinds of things they want to just keep moving and be active um unless it's like a really good angle but that's kind of why you see hobbit goes for a couple timing peaks there like he's, he's constantly just shifting his position a bit goes for a very quick jump spot there and kind of like throws i think that's a decoy that that just i, I like it, it's just weird it kind of just messes with his opponents i don't even know why he has a decoy in this round but at this point his team's in a a really like tough position on the hold but he decides to get proactive towards short and then just takes them all down like gets two kills and that was actually something that a dren on gambit back when they were actually winning um majors like, that's, that's something he did a lot. Like, he would just... There's a play coming, and he decides to peek into them. And Axile just finds the rotation, a proactive rotation at that, going down connector. And then just finds the timing, knowing that OG, OG just really uh, don't have anything left to try to defend that. So, really just... It's just so oppressive. It's so oppressive playing against this team. Like, it, it actually is just... It's exhausting to think about being on the other team when you're playing against Gambit. It, it, it's so... It's so hard. It's so hard. So this is kind of an interesting round where we're going to go uh, between Axile, Hobbit, and then back to Axile. So... Axile stands at the top of connector. This is a really good area for sound cues because you can hear what's going on at fountain very easily You can go hear what's going on at the bottom of connector very easily You do have to leave after a timing, but it's a way that you can support your opera enough and uh, Kind of a flub nade there maybe hurt the chances of, of Shiro getting away So that's kind of on Axile, but he does make up for it There's two flashes to try to help him out and then Hobbit picks up a couple kills himself and then back to Axile as he tries to just juggle the guns away, not give OG anything in this round. As he tries to just push back, or like move back. And then he also kind of like holds the line for a bit, thinking that someone's going to make a cheeky play on him through the smoke. And then Axile, I mean, he can opt to just enough. Uh, nice shot onto flames. And then Naphne's able to clean it up. So... Another Axile around here. And we're going to see a simple flash over. And then he just peeks. Like, it's it's just, like, what? It's just frustrating. It's kind of just frustrating. And then, like, I don't know how he can think this is okay. But he, but he just does it. Uh, just peeks to, by Fountain on his own. Here is the op. And now that Montu's running away, he knows he can find a timing, potentially, or at least catch them in rotation there. And now that Flames gave up his position with his utility too, he has all the information in the world. Knows that there's one person there, knows that it's probably just the single lurk in Flames, and now he just he completely outpositioned him. Just just destroyed him in this default. And, oh, he, he actually lets Shiro die, which is strange, and he's probably kind of regretting that. He was going to maybe go for the super long con play, but after losing one player, you just kind of feel like, Okay, I need to just get this kill back, and at this point, just just compl just still holds all of A for such a long period of time. 50 seconds left, and Gambit at this point, like, this is why Gambit are, are also just so oppressive. Like, because there's nobody around A with 50 seconds left, they just leave Axile here. They play all these players towards this B bomb site, and now they just have a really strong setup that they know they don't even have to change up for a pretty long time. Because, like, like OG are basically, their hand is forced at this point towards this B bomb site. So, Inter is just plays towards the smoke, actually does get caught. And then Axile rotates in with the op. Already had a good idea that they were towards B at this point. But there's no Heaven Smoke from OG at this point. So, this is, this is just going to be really... It should, it should be pretty simple for, Na for uh, Naphany and Axile. 
but it actually does come down to the 1v1, but Nafany knows he can just play the time at this point. They've just wasted so much time, and, and pretty much this entire round just comes down, even though Nafany does get three kills, so much of this round is basically just Axile controlling all of that space towards A by himself, even though he did lose Shiro in the process. The fact is that he just outread OG in the default completely, like just outclassed them. It's not even, it wasn't even some great team play or anything from Gambit there. And that's, that's why Overpass A, Overpass is such an exciting map because you kind of have to do that sometimes. If to be an elite team, you have to take some just calculated risks like that and this is just super unlucky lucky for og they run through the molotov of nafany they thought they were going to put it out with the smoke but uh hobbit just goes for the spam there and he's able to get one almost gets the second kill full rotation in gambit know exactly what's happening at this point and this is pretty much just lights out for the rest of uh for pretty much for pretty much uh og at this point like it's like completely outclassed on the CT side here. And this is why Gambit are frequently picking Overpass as their map pick. Doesn't matter who they're playing against. This is just always gonna be a really solid map for them. They, they, they do so much right in terms of the macro here and they have some world-class individuals. Uh, and that's gonna be it. That's the one-two punch of Gambit there. Uh, the, like they just do so much right. I almost feel like, I almost feel like they do so much right so fast. It's hard, it's hard to cover everything. Like legitimately, it's difficult because they they're all over the place. They're always they're always making these strong rotations, these strong reads, and there it is. 108 ADR for Axile, 200 utility damage, even eight. Like everybody is flashing too. Everybody's helping out. You know, Hobbit with less because he's the connector player on the default, uh, but still, nonetheless, just really good stuff from them. And that's gonna be that is gonna be it. Uh, hopefully, you guys enjoyed. I I I almost feel like. This was like just strangely, just like of course they're gonna get the kills, right? Like, of course they're gonna, of course they're gonna destroy everybody. And uh, thanks for bearing with me, guys. Again, I like I am still in LA. It's really hot here. Uh, I, I'm probably sweating on the camera a little bit, actually. But uh, that's gonna be it. As always, being toxic is a choice.